Welcome back to Actual Investing. Today we're going to talk about five technology stocks, and I think there's going to be a few hidden gems in here. So let's just dive right into it. So the first stock I want to talk about today is OpenText. And this was a suggestion from one of my viewers, but it's also the highest scoring stock on my spreadsheet. So we're going to find out why and, uh, you know, what this company actually does. So OpenText describes themselves as an information management software company. But really, they have uh, been a serial acquirer, which means they've been acquiring lots of smaller companies, and now they're sort of a one-stop shop for all different types of software. So they, I wrote down here, what does this company do? What doesn't this company do? They have their hands in lots of different pots. So they are uh, in the automation niche. They help automate business and financial processes. Um, they have a CRM platform. Um, they offer security software to secure sensitive information, and they offer uh, e-invoicing services, um, and <laughs> they do a lot more than that, actually. This is just a small list of what they do. Um, but essentially, I, I think that this company has huge implications in AI, uh, only because um, information is data, right? And they're an information management software, so that means they have access to tons of data, and data powers algorithms, which powers AI. So I think that OpenText is slowly trying to pivot themselves into an AI company. Um, we'll notice that they also already are uh, helping businesses automate their, their business processes. So I think that that kind of leads the way into more advanced AI implications. Uh, they're not doing too much with AI right now, and they're, I think, flying a bit under the radar because they have a very, very low price-to-sales ratio um, of less than two, uh, despite still growing. Um, if you go on Google Finance, you'll see that their year-over-year -year revenue growth was 67%. Um, that's a bit misleading because they have been making acquisitions, so their organic revenue growth is actually quite a bit smaller, but I haven't noticed that on my spreadsheet. And down here, we can see a few acquisitions that they've done recently. Look at that. Uh, two acquisitions in 2023, and then an acquisition in 2022, acquisition in 2021. They are just going on a buying spree, um, and they still have almost a billion dollars in cash remaining. Now, granted, they do have a lot of debt, um, but they also have now a lot of assets from all these acquisitions. So uh, their balance sheet is not looking too bad. So I think Open OpenText uh, makes a, a nice little interesting niche uh, under the radar AI play. All right, let's go on to the next stock on my list today. I'm going to try to do these a little bit more rapid fire because we've got a lot to cover. Um, so the next stock that I think is a good under the radar technology stock would be Pure Storage. So Pure Storage is a data storage company, as the name implies. Um, but what's interesting about them is that they sell hardware and software, um, and that the gross margins on both are actually quite high, 70%. Now, I, you could argue 70% gross margin is low for software, but it's incredibly high for hardware. So to achieve 70% gross margins on both hardware and software, that's really nice. Um, they are a leader in market share for flash storage. Uh, they have more market share even than NetApp and IBM in flash storage. Um, and their subscription ARR, which is their annual recurring revenue, is rising steadily. So look at this nice graph. You can see those orange bars are their annual recurring revenue. Um, and they've breached a, a billion dollars in annual recurring revenue. So that's really nice. So they have a nice low valuation, good margins, and steady growth. And as AI becomes more and more ingrained in our lives, like I said, data powers AI. And you're going to need a place to store all that data. So... Uh, Pure Storage presents a nice attractive opportunity um, in the AI space, and uh, interestingly, they were just added to the S&P uh, mid-cap index. So if you, if you noticed their price was up yesterday while everything else was down, that was why. They just got added to the uh, S&P 600, I think it is, mid-cap index. So now all these index funds are going to be going out and buying Pure Storage stock. So that's not really a reason to invest in it, just an interesting observation. So let's keep it moving. Next stock on the list, uh, there'll be two here, but I'll, I'll go through them quickly. So the next one is Fortinet, and Fortinet is a cybersecurity company. Uh, they're kind of a giant in cybersecurity. Um, they are, uh, I think, a bit of an overlooked cybersecurity company because I think you see CrowdStrike and Cloudflare uh, getting lots of attention in the cybersecurity space these days, whereas Fortinet stock price has actually been, uh, you know, held down a little bit compared to those other two. Um, so they are kind of a one-stop shop for cybersecurity, uh, whereas 
CrowdStrike focuses on endpoint security, which is securing uh, the end devices like a laptop or a, a cell phone. Um, Fortinet does endpoint security as well as firewalls, antivirus, and uh, virtual private network, which is VPN, as well as intrusion detection. So they do a lot more. Uh, so I'd say they're more of a jack of all trades, master of none. But the nice thing is that uh, as companies look to cut costs, they're going to try to consolidate their vendors and perhaps go to Fortinet. So I think also with Fortinet, you're getting cybersecurity exposure at a much more attractive valuation than CrowdStrike. Um, all right, let's just keep it moving. This, like I said, this is going to be uh, rapid fire rounds today. Uh, the next stock on my list is a very, very uh, under the radar stock in the semiconductor industry. And that stock is Excellus. So Excellus is a pick and shovel play on a pick and shovel play. And uh, if you haven't heard that expression, it's just saying that the people who got rich during the gold rush were selling picks and shovels, not selling gold, right? Um, or, or, or mining for gold, I should say. They were the ones giving everybody the tools to mine for gold, um, and they just reaped the rewards. So Excellus uh, provides the picks and shovels for the semiconductor industry. So they are involved in a very important process in semiconductor manufacturing called ion implementation. Uh, what does that mean? Well, that's a great question. I'm not an expert on it. But uh, just based on some, some quick research, um, it's a process where ions are accelerated into a solid target, changing the physical, chemical, and electrical properties of the target. So essentially, it's a required process in manufacturing semiconductors, um, as, as well as other things, but the primary use case here is semiconductors. <laughs> My thought here is that uh, if you want to invest in technology, invest in the picks and shovels of technology, which is semiconductors, you know, your Intels, your uh, NVIDIAs of the world. Uh, or you can invest in the picks and shovels of the picks and shovels and invest in a company like Excellus. Um, there's others uh, in, the, in the semiconductor um, materials industry that you can invest in, but one I picked today was Excellus because I do think that they're under the radar um, and they are growing quite well uh, amid the, the AI boom, which has led to a, a stronger demand for semiconductors. So I think Excellus makes a really nice buy right now. Um, and really quick before I go on to the last one, I just want to thank you guys for, uh, for watching the, the channel and for subscribing. Um, I really appreciate it. it. It was nice to see so many comments in my last video, and uh, I'm just kind of doing this for fun. So I really appreciate you, uh, you know, coming around. And uh, please feel free to like the video if you do, in fact, like this kind of content. I think that helps the algorithm to push this to other people. So anyway, I'll move on with the video. The final tech stock on my list of, of technology stocks and hidden gems is Dynatrace. And Dynatrace is a bit of a complex company, but essentially they're a machine learning stock. Uh, they're involved in what's known as application performance monitoring, or APM. And essentially all that means is that they take all this data exhaust um, and turn unstructured data, which is just, you know, <laughs> the very raw data that you get from any kind of application, and they turn it into structured data that companies can actually use and make informed decisions on. So that's why you'll see that they're involved in uh, what's called observability, right? They, they take data and make it into something that the company can observe and make decisions on rather than just a big mess of data. Um, they have decent growth, though it is slowing a bit, uh, but I think that that's kind of been the trend for every software stock. Um, the thing that I like about Data Trace, or <laughs> Data Trace, Dynatrace, is that uh, while they compete with Datadog, that's why I got my words mixed up, uh, they are actually a leader in Gartner's Magic Quadrant for APM. Um, and you can see that down here. This is Gartner's Magic Quadrant. I've only, you know, copied over the leaders, but essentially what it is is four squares, and the top right is where you want to be. They're saying these are the leaders in this particular niche. So for the niche of APM, Dynatrace is solidly leading the way, but uh, Datadog and New Relic are closely behind, so we kind of have to watch that. Um, I, I, the only reason I didn't mention Datadog here is because Datadog does have quite a steep valuation right now, um, and also I think Dynatrace being the leader in APM is, is attractive, whereas Datadog is more of, again, a jack of all trades. Uh, Datadog does a lot more than just APM. Uh, so I think if you're looking for a machine learning stock that's a bit more pure play in the APM space, Dynatrace is looking pretty good. So, all right, so now my favorite part, let's go into my spreadsheet. This is my disruptive growth stock spreadsheet, and we'll see how everything scores and talk about why. So open text, like I said, is the highest scoring stock on my spreadsheet in general. They have a score of 14.5. My average is around 11. The max possible is 20, which I, I think is actually impossible because there's no stock that's ever going to hit 20. Um, but on my spreadsheet, you get rewarded for uh, high gross margins, 
high annualized revenue, a low valuation measured by price to sales, and high growth. So open text has three of those things really well. They've got pretty good gross margins. They've got really high annualized revenues of almost six billion. They've got a low price to annualized sales of less than two, and they have positive growth. While it's not super strong and it is slowing a bit, it is at least positive. So they're trending the right direction. And again, we need to back out those acquisitions because if you go on Google, it'll say it's 67%. And like, you know, it's not truly 67% when you look at organic growth. Um, so that's open text. Would I buy open text today? I'm not sure. I think I think it's attractive, and I, I think there's a lot um, to like about it, but I also am worried that maybe they're trying to do too much, right? Because they're involved in a lot of different industries. I want to see how those all play together, um, and hopefully they can benefit from that vendor consolidation, and they can continue their growth. So I, I, don't, I don't think I'd rush out to buy open text, but I think there's a lot worse buys out there than open text right now. Um, all right, so let's look at Pure Storage next. We'll just kind of go in order of what I talked about today. So here's Pure Storage. They score above average at a 12.6, um, boosted by their nice gross margins, really high annualized revenue, uh, relatively low price to annualized sales, and positive growth. Um, this is accelerating. I haven't updated this yet, but this is in the double digits. So realistically, their score might be a bit higher. Um, I have to update a lot of this manually, so some of this information might be outdated. But if you do want to see the spreadsheet, um, I'll link it in the description of this video. It's uh, public for anyone to see. So feel free to take a look and, uh, you know, and analyze some stocks and even put your own stocks in here and see how they, how they stack up. Um, so Pure Storage, I, I do think, makes an attractive buy right now. I think you you really can't deny that data is going to be more and more ingrained in people's lives. And I think one of the best ways to invest in data is to invest in data storage because at the end of the day, uh, all this data needs to go somewhere. Even if it's in the cloud, it's on a computer somewhere. Uh, maybe it's in California or uh, you know somewhere else in the world, but that data is stored somewhere and we need, we need flash storage. So I think with the low valuation, and relatively high margins for a partially hardware business, I think you do a lot worse than, or you, you could do a lot worse than pure storage. So I, I, I think pure storage is an attractive buy. I've been buying pure storage lately. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, let's keep it moving. Let's look at Fortinet, which is a bit higher up on this list. So they have a, a, a relatively good score of 13.1. You'll notice that's kind of the theme today is that I picked highly scored stocks. Um, so what's helping them out? Uh, low valuation for a cybersecurity company. You can see CrowdStrike, while they have more of a SaaS platform, their valuation is more than double Fortinet's. So um, that's why I'm saying you get uh, cybersecurity exposure at an attractive valuation. They have decent gross margins. Um, you can see they're actually higher than CrowdStrike's. So hey, that's kind of nice. Um, really high annualized revenue, again, higher than CrowdStrike's uh, because they do more than just endpoint. Um, and the nice thing that I like is that they're really not spending much on R&D, which is really cool um, to, to be a cybersecurity leader and not have to invest too much in R&D. That's wonderful. Good for them. They've got a good advantage. Um, and they're growing at double digits still. So I like to see that. I think Fortinet is, uh, is at an attractive buying point right now. Um, all right, here's Excellus, our semiconductor stock. Um, they're a bit of a smaller stock, so um, their score isn't quite as high because they've just breached a billion in annualized revenue. But again, we see a low price to annualized sales, but we also see sort of low gross margins, um, which, you know, that's, that's not terrible. They're not like a software stock, so I wouldn't expect them to be in the 70s, 80s. Um, 43 is fine. I really wouldn't invest in anything less than 20% gross margins, so they've still got uh, a ways to go there. Um, they're not spending a lot of money. Um, they are growing. Uh, I, think, I think Excellus is a good semiconductor play because they're going to grow as semiconductors grow because they're directly involved in the manufacturing of semiconductors. So if you're looking to get exposure to technology, I think Excellus is, uh, you know, you, you could do worse. <laughs> I'm going to say that for all of them, aren't I? Um, all right, finally is Dynatrace. So Dynatrace is the lowest scoring that we've talked about today. Um, the, the nice thing, though, is that they have really good gross margins in 80%. Um, they have a sort of medium-ish valuation for a SaaS company. Uh, it's in the Price to annualized sales of 11. They do have double digit growth uh, and they've reached a billion in annualized revenue. So I'd say uh, there's, there's nothing that is amazing about each of these four metrics, that they're just kind of like hitting the mark on those four metrics. Um, and like I said, I think I like Dynatrace more than Datadog right now. I own both, full disclosure, Dynatrace and Datadog. 
but I think I like Dynatrace more right now because Datadog seems to uh, have kind of an, uh, a lofty valuation right now. They, they had a really good earnings report last quarter, uh, and their stock just shot up, and it didn't really come down much, and so I think that maybe the valuation might be a bit unjustified. Sure, they had a great quarter, but, uh, but I think their stock ran up something like 30%. Uh, and it's it's now sitting at uh, 52 week highs in that range. So I, I think if you're looking for APM exposure, again, that's application performance monitoring. Um, I think Dynatrace would be the better way to go than Datadog. But uh, but I do like both stocks. So so anyway, that is my video on five kind of rapid fire technology stocks. Hopefully this uh, gets you started on your journey in investing in technology. And if you'd like to see me cover any other stocks, I, I'm actually uh, stacking up quite the list from your guys' comments. So thank you. Thank you so much for commenting and, and engaging. Um, let me know down below, and I'll, I'll do my best to analyze them in a video. Um, but until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.